Hey guys, it's Junior. Welcome back to Horsepower Warehouse. Now you guys probably know me pretty well for all of my Corvette builds that I do. And a lot of the times when I do a C2 Corvette, we do it to top notch specifications. We do complete nut and bolt restorations on our stuff, uh, frame off, whatever you want to call it. We do the full Monty. But whenever I do a restoration on a C2, there's a lot of stuff that I will purposefully put the wrong stuff on the car. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but let me explain. I have a short list here of things that I'm gonna go through with the car that I will on purpose do wrong. Um, so first and foremost, let's just use my Mazport 427 that I'm building here as an example. First up on the list is paint. So we have a couple of different options when we go to paint a car. In terms of color, you know, we always build it as per the trim tag. How the car was born will determine what we're going to paint it in terms of the color. But other than that, you know, the world is your option. What type of paint, so on and so forth. We only use top of the line paint. I prefer a PPG product if at all possible. Um, PPG, I believe, did do the paint on this car, but here's where we deviate from NCRS correct. When these cars were built, this one in particular, 1966, it was a single stage paint, meaning there was not a base coat and then a clear coat on top of it. It was shiny base coat basically all the way through. When you go to buff the car, it will actually bleed off the color rather than um, white like clear coat. The reason that we do the modern paint system is all cars today are actually painted in base clear with the exception of Toyota, I believe is still using it on their white paint. They still haven't figured out how to do a proper base clear white that isn't gonna degrade, but I digress. All proper modern cars use a base clear paint system. The reason being is the clear is a sacrificial layer. It's also UV protectant for the base coat underneath it. Base clear paint will last a tremendous amount longer versus single stage. Also the final finish that you get out of the product is bar none better. It takes way more prep and polishing, compounding than polishing for a single stage paint versus a base clear. Most show cars, if not all modern show cars, are painted in a base clear paint job for that reason. As such, we do not do the NCRS correct standard on most of the cars that I do. They are not single stage, they are base clear. Speaking of coatings, here's another one. Powder coating. You can see the chassis underneath the 67. That's getting ready. And you can see I have a table over here with a bunch of powder coated parts as well. We choose to powder coat our chassis, our suspension components, brackets, radiator shrouds, if it's got the metal shroud, as many components as we can, we actually like to powder coat because it makes it a lifetime restoration. When these cars were built, they did have powder coating available. However, it just was not a cost effective way to build cars. So Chevrolet decided to just basically use a standard um, paint on the chassis. Uh, we do have that available, um, but we almost never use it because the powder coat chassis and suspension components will be a lifetime restoration, whereas you're starting the clock if you do it really any other way. You can do a modern like Eastwood ceramic coating, which will last considerably longer than what was available in 66, and it will replicate that finish. But NCRS, to be honest with you guys, they are very picky. Um, they will call you out for the smallest of things. I've, oh, I've had a, a lot of NCRS judges come through here, um, look at my work. They can genuinely appreciate all of the things that I'm explaining to you, the utility of everything I'm doing, but it, and they'll tell you, you know, we may or may not mark you off for this because, you know, it, we do see why you're doing these upgrades, um, but they're 
they're judges. They are looking at a book and seeing how the car was built originally, and then they're referencing that. And it's either correct or it's not. It's a yes or no. Um, is it better? All the things I'm showing you make for a much better car. But are they correct to the book? No, but that's the purpose of me making this video. Beyond the powder coat, let's go on to the stainless steel brake lines. Okay, that's a big upgrade on these cars. I don't know if you're aware, but with the fuel and the brake lines, it's significantly easier to do it with the body off because they run along the top here and they actually run through the frame here. So it's, uh, it's a bit of a task. So we always do stainless lines, so that way they're a lifetime. They're a little bit more expensive and they're a little bit more of a bear to get them to seat properly in the flare areas, but we always do stainless brake lines. Stainless lined calipers as well with the O-ring seals. Let me show you something. Let me take a quick trip through the shop here and show you my porter cooler. No, I'm just kidding. I love this fan, but look at my mighty pile of calipers. These are all Corvette calipers. And I'm keeping these because these are all Delco cores. Um, they are worth a pretty penny, but every single one of these calipers has failed. Reason being, from the factory, they did not use stainless liners and they used a lip seal versus an O-ring seal. So what we do is we use Lone Star calipers. They have a stainless steel liner and a O-ring style seal on their pistons. I mean, it makes for a much more durable braking system. It actually works a lot better as well. Um, you know, that's something that can be argued. Does it really make a difference in terms of performance? I would say that having driven it both ways, you know, I definitely prefer the stainless line calipers with the O-ring style seals. Um, they seem to just work better all the way around. Speaking of brakes, and I had someone call me out on this, this car is a 1966. So it was born with a single circuit master cylinder. Here it is. Single circuit, this isn't the one off of this car, but a, a, a good example. We almost always go with a dual circuit master cylinder. And you can see I have the complete retrofit kit here to make this car have the dual cylinder. I don't need the lines because I already put the, the dual circuit lines in. You can see all the lines are here. Uh, there's also a proportion valve that goes underneath. The reason that I do the dual circuit master cylinder is 100% for safety. The last thing I want to do is build a car and read in the paper that one of you guys died because you actually chose to enjoy it and drive it like you should. Um, if your brakes were to fail and with a single circuit master cylinder, you have nothing all the way around. Dual circuit, it separates the front and rear brakes. You have two different reservoirs. So if one were to fail, you at least have the other to get you stopped. It's a really important safety item. I mean, that was leaps and bounds when they actually came out with that. A highly suggested upgrade if you're actually going to drive the car. If you're going to make it an NCRS um, hot, hot wheels car, where you're gonna put it in a trailer and just have it judged and you don't care about anything but points, you know, put put the dangerous one on. But if I'm driving it, I want the dual circuit master cylinder. So that's what we put on almost all of ours. Going further, you'll notice I have an interstate battery in there. I don't use the Delco Tartop $650 battery because they don't last more than a year and a half on average. You have to continuously keep a tender on them. I've just, I've had so many of them fail. I'm not gonna spend that kind of money on a battery and it not last the standard four or five years. I know it says 18 months on my interstate there, but that battery will last four years. Interstate makes fantastic batteries. So that's what I prefer for my car is something that will work up, you know, a heck of a lot better than the one that will actually get you the every single point. This car does not have power steering, but Borgeson makes a power steering upgrade kit that works just 
Oh my gosh, guys, it is so fantastic on these C2 Corvettes. I know it's not correct, but this video is about upgrades that I would recommend doing to your car, even if you're doing a frame off. And if it's not correct, then so be it. The Borgeson power steering, if you wanted to add power steering to your car and it didn't have it already, you want the Borgeson kit, guys. I mean, it, you can literally steer it with your pinky. It's fantastic. Um, one of the main reasons that I actually made this video is a bunch of you guys commented on some of my previous videos about all the sound deadening. I go crazy with the sound deadening. This is all acoustic deadening. Uh, let's do this with one finger. Yeah, there we go. So I do a, a ton of acoustic deadening. Actually, everything shiny that you see here is gonna be covered by carpet. So once I'm done with this car, you won't be able to tell there's any sound deadening at all in here. And I'm gonna do the, the thermal deadening on the outside sills because this is a side, side pipe car as well. But the acoustic and thermal deadening just makes it for so much nicer of a ride. I mean, it's quieter. Um, the thermal keeps, you know, the heat coming from up below. I mean, highly recommended. I do the acoustic and thermal deadening on almost every car I built. The clock. So you'll notice in the center, in this hole here would normally be mounted a dash clock. Now this clock is normally a points activated clock. It's got a little mechanism that's on a spring and basically it goes until the points touch and bing, it bounces back and then it, it, it truly is a mechanical style clock. Um, they are notorious for not working all that great. Um, it, they do work, but for a few months and then they'll stop and maybe you tap it once and, and it'll start working again. They do make a quartz upgrade. If you're not concerned about points, then do the quartz upgrade on the clocks. Just might as well, you know what I mean? So it will work longer than six months. Um, beyond the clock, heading down is the radio. So there are radio conversions that you can have done where they take Ideally, you're already non-functioning radio and they put modern internals in it. Um, they take the tubes out and put, you know, closed circuit um, with modern FM receiver. It just works a lot better, but it maintains the factory look. That's kind of what I like to do if the customer wants it. On all of our cars, we keep the radios factory, but it's just something to consider when you're doing these cars is having the radio upgraded to modern specs so that way it will actually last. Be honest with you, I don't use the radio all that often in these cars at all. Um, it's more of a driving experience for me, so I don't care what's on the radio. I have that in my modern cars. Let's look at the tires here. You'll notice that these have radial tires on this car. They were born with bias plies. Uh, there's tons of videos just on the significant differences in tire technology from bias ply to radial tires. We almost always run radials on the car if you're gonna drive it. Is it NCRS 100 point correct? Nope. They want you to see, they want to see the correct bias ply tire that the car was born with. Uh, like I said, guys, they aren't judging how good your car is. It may be 100 times better than factory built. They are judging, is that how it came? Um, beyond the radial tires, and I have a little bit of a list here printed out. I did not know my list was this intensive of the stuff that I am actively doing wrong on these cars, but I am making the final product so much better that I will justify every single item on this list. Beyond the radial tires, we have the valve seats. We have modern unleaded fuels. There is no lead. You don't want to constantly try to put a lead additive in it. So when we have the heads redone, we put the hardened valve seats in. More modern fuels, so that way it works you know, right out of the pump. Um, stainless shims for the alignment. Right here. So these are the trailing arm shims. And you can see stainless steel with bolts. When you buy your shim kits for these cars, they're available in mild steel and stainless. The stainless is, I think, double the cost, but every time we do shims, anytime there is a stainless variant and a mild steel variant, usually the stainless is more expensive, but we almost always go for the premium variant just because stainless is a lifetime type of part, whereas mild steel, if it's not coated properly, you know, the, the timer's ticking. The gaskets, we always use the best available. 
Um, I am a stickler for cork gaskets because they work the best for these cars. Now I know Felpro sells a rubber gasket that they can claim is a premium upgrade. Stay away from those guys. The cork is where you want to be. But I'm, I don't reference the manual in terms of gaskets. I only use what works best with all of my experience and all of my guys' experience. So I, I don't care what the NCRS has to say about that, if it's the correct color gasket or not. I will also use odor, odor neutralizers. When I take apart the heater box, I actually wipe it out. I will ozone machine the entire car to neutralize the odor, but then I put a coating on the inside of the heater box to neutralize odors, um, and it keeps it so it smells really nice inside of the car when I'm done, and it stays that way for, I've had cars come back two years later and they still have that that nice pleasant smell inside so I think that makes a big difference it's not correct but I'll do it anyhow last thing on the list is fluids now I am not against using AMS oil extreme duty gear oil in the rear um, zinc or ZDPP additives in the oil ethanol neutralizer I mean there's better coolants uh, there are so many different fluid technologies that are available to us today. I don't use synthetic oil because that is a big no-no for the cork gaskets. Um, really any synthetic fluids, these cars tend not to like. I try to go for the conventional variant, um, but today's fluid technology is so much further than it was in the 60s that you would be cheating yourself to not utilize the best available by you know a quality u.s made company like ams oil or lucas or so on or so forth um but yeah let me know what you guys think below I, that was like a 16 or 15 item list of all the things that i'm actively doing wrong on these cars but i justify every one of those items i have the choice to do it right or do it that way and that's what i choose because ultimately when you go to drive this car, I mean, it makes it so much nicer when you get it on the road versus being able to say, oh, I have a 100 point NCRS top flight car versus, hey, I have a, a hot, a, a classic car that I can really enjoy. I was gonna say hot rod. This thing isn't really a hot rod. This is a true to form car. It was just made better through modern advancements that you really, if I didn't tell you most of those things, guys, there's no way you'd be able to tell. I mean, you're not gonna see all the sound deadening, obviously, but stainless line calipers. These guys with the NCRS though, they will pull your car apart and they are looking for those things just so they can deduct you because they know that they're available. They know that they're better. So they know you want to do that and they will deduct you for that reason. So it's kind of a counterintuitive process um, to have your car, you know, awarded in such that fashion because then that just means that there's there's better available and you chose not to do that all of these modifications that i mentioned i do on this car can absolutely be reversed this stuff can get taken out and this can be made into an ncrs top flight 100 point car i don't do anything to defile the car everything that i do is just in my opinion, enhancing it, making it better. I'm trying to make it so when the customer invests all this money, they actually have a car that they love, that they love to drive. You know, that's what's most important to me is I wanna build something beautiful. I want it to be correct as possible. But number one is when, when you buy a car that I put my fingers on, I want you to love it. You know what I mean? That's, I don't know, another crazy YouTuber. <laughs> But thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, take care, guys.